Good morning again. The Council will convene today to discuss on Women, Peace and Security Agenda, which um, I have the honor and pleasure to chair during the Albanian Presidency in an open debate on the role of regional organizations in implementing women, peace and security in the face of political turmoil and seizures of power by force. Recent events in Ukraine, in Afghanistan, in Sudan, Myanmar or Mali, to name only a few, have drastically affected the prospects of women's organizations and gender equality advocates in these countries. National commitments on women, peace and security are abruptly interrupted and civic space has shrinked dramatically. The role of regional organizations in matters related to uh, the Women, Peace and Security agenda has become increasingly important given the magnitude and complexity of challenges facing the international community today. In many ways, regional organizations have unique and complementary capacities that when properly coordinated with the UN system can produce good, fast and effective results in preserving and or accelerating the implementation of the Women, Peace and Security Agenda, especially in context of political turmoil and seizures of power by force. Regional organizations are often the first to react in crisis response, to engage with concerned parties to ensure protection of civilians. They are uniquely placed to build trust and promote dialogue among concerned parties as well as offer support in mediation and reconciliation and can be influential in advocating for women's full equal and meaningful as well as safe participation in all aspects of peace and security. Hence, this open debate will have a twofold aim. First, to shed light on persistent shortfalls in implementing the normative framework on women, peace and security in context of in contexts that are marked by recent military coups or seizures of power by force. Second, to gather and share best experiences and ideas on ways that the Security Council or regional organizations can protect and further advance this agenda in such situations including to support the work of women peace builders and civil society organizations and make gender analysis central to our prevention and response strategies. Only by working together with the regional organizations, we can close the huge gap between the normative framework and the implementation of the women peace and security agenda on the ground. Especially vital is this uh, cooperation in the context of recent military coups and seizures of power by force, where we have witnessed national commitments on women, peace and security abruptly interrupted. I strongly believe that uh, today's open debate will serve as a good opportunity to exchange views, to share best experiences and bring fresh insights and perspectives on how to accelerate the implementation of the Women, Peace and Security Agenda. I thank you.